Hello, my name is Tim Frost from Calnex Solutions. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person today. Denver in the ski season would have been epic, but unfortunately we're stuck here in the UK and uh, we can't travel. We can't get a haircut, as you can see. But still, if you think my hair is bad, you should see our Prime Minister. Today I'm going to talk to you about synchronisation in front hall networks. Front hall networks started out as a means to avoid the power losses involved in transmitting the signal from the base station here up to the antenna here at the top of the cell tower. If you use a coaxial cable for the RF signal, there are several dBs of power losses involved in going up that cable to the antenna. So the idea was to replace that with a digital interface carried over a fibre. And this was the first front hall. Then people realised that because it's a fibre interface, the baseband unit that was at the foot of the cell tower could actually be moved into a, a nearby data centre. It didn't have to be right next to the cell tower. With 5G, we've gone even further, and the base station itself has been disaggregated into three parts. The centralised unit, the distributed unit, and the radio unit at the top of the cell tower. One of the main reasons behind this move to disaggregated base stations is the trend towards virtualization. This is where all the functions of a base station are implemented in software running on generic white box server hardware. It makes it easier to add capacity um, by adding blades to your server hardware. And all of the services are defined in software. And that makes it possible to turn on new customer services quickly and also offer more bespoke services to customers. It also means there's less hardware out in the field um, and the hardware is concentrated in data centres where it's safer and more secure. Another reason is that with 5G, in order to meet the capacity demands, there are going to need to be more antennas out there. And rather than having to put a whole base station out with every antenna, um, you can have smaller and simpler radio units out in the field. But to coordinate all of this requires new standards. And that's the reason why bodies such as the ORAN Alliance and the Telecom Infra Project have grown up. The ORAN Alliance mission statement is transforming the radio access networks industry towards open, intelligent, virtualized, and fully interoperable RAN. That's a bit of a mouthful, but it really does explain the purpose. This trend towards virtualization is going to be, require management and um, interoperability as well. There are going to be new vendors coming in, software vendors, hardware vendors, and uh, they're all going to need to be um, singing from the same hymn sheet. This diagram shows the protocol stack for the 5G base station, or G node B. When this is split between the three different units, the upper layer protocols are handled in the centralised unit. The intermediate layer protocols are handled in the distributed unit and these tend to be the timing and latency sensitive protocols and such that they have to be deployed much closer to the RU for latency reading. The, the RU itself handles the frame timing and the conversion into radio frequency and uh, is connected directly to the transmitter. What are the synchronisation requirements that apply between the different elements of a disaggregated base station? Well, firstly, we have the radio requirements. Every radio unit within a TDD network has to meet what's called a 3 microsecond cell phase synchronisation accuracy in order to avoid interference within the network. But for radio units connected to the same distributed unit, in order to run some of the higher capacity radio protocols, such as intraband carrier aggregation, they might have to meet a 260 nanosecond time alignment error. Or if they're operating in frequency range 2, which is a multi gigahertz range, 20 to 50 gigahertz, that requirement is 130 nanoseconds. Now, timings are ultimately coming from a central time reference. Um, and the, the radio units are required to meet 
plus or minus 1.5 microseconds from that, cell, uh, that central time reference. This guarantees that they'll meet the three microseconds cell phase synchronization accuracy. For the distributed unit, they don't have a hard limit on synchronization. They do require somewhere in the region of three to five microseconds for latency management. And the centralized unit itself has no synchronization requirement on it. It does not need to be synchronized. Let's explore the latency management requirements a little bit closer. Between the DU and the RU, there's a maximum latency of 100 microseconds. And it's the DU's responsibility for managing that latency. The DU schedules the time of playout of traffic on the RU. So in order to do that, it needs to know the delay from DU to RU. That delay will be made up of the minimum network latency, the fastest a packet can physically get through the network, the packet delay variation, and it also has to take into account any time error in the DU and the RU. The RU, on the other hand, will have a receive buffer, and that's to hold packets as they come into the device ready for playout. And that has to be big enough to accommodate the maximum variation possible. So the time error between the DU and the RU also has to be accommodated within that, um, the size of that receive buffer. The ORAN Alliance has come up with four different architectures for distributing sync within a front hall network. They call it LLS, lower layer split, but for us, it effectively means front hall. Firstly, just configuration C1. This is where the DU has a synchronization reference connected to it. It might be connected by a, a synchronization network or it might be directly connected. And then the timing from that DU is passed to the RU through a direct Ethernet connection. Configuration C2 is very similar. Again, the DU has a synchronization reference and it passes that timing to the RU. Only now, instead of a direct Ethernet connection, we have a network in between, the front hall network. Then we have configuration C3. This is where the synchronization reference is now connected directly into the front hall network. So the RU receives its timing from the synchronization reference and not via the DU. And then finally we have configuration C4, where everything has its own synchronization reference. This diagram shows the C2 configuration in a bit more detail. C1 is very similar, but without the front hall network. So on the left you can see the time alignment error and CPSA requirements on the radios. And then on the right you can see the timing requirement at the input to the DU. Now it could be receiving its synchronization reference through a G.8271.1 or a G.8271.2 network. So it could be as much as 1.1 microsecond of time error at the input to the DU. Then we have the front hall network between the DU and the RU. The network time error for that could be somewhere between 95 to 140 nanoseconds, depending on the requirements. We also have a relative time error between the two radio units, and this could be somewhere around 60 to 190 nanoseconds, again, depending on the requirements. But we, mustn't also, we must not forget that we also have a frequency error requirement on the radio units, on the, on the signals transmitted. This is a 50 parts per billion frequency error, and it's measured over a very short time interval. In order to meet that requirement, we're budgeting for frequency error as well. So at the input of the radio units, there's a budget of 36 parts per billion. And then at the output of a distributed unit, there's a requirement of 15 parts per billion. This means that there must be a very a uh, low bandwidth filter within the distributed unit itself, a sub millihertz filter. Traditional base stations have always had this filter, it's just now in a disaggregated base station, it's moved into the DU. Then we have the C3 configuration. 
This is where the synchronization reference is directly connected into the front hall network, as you see in the diagram below. The radio unit requirements are the same, same relative time error, the same time alignment error on the output. But now it's receiving the synchronization reference directly through the front hall network and not via the distributed unit. The distributed unit has a choice. It can get its timing from a centralized synchronization reference or it can get its timing requirements from the front hall network. Either way, it doesn't matter because the synchronization requirements on the DU are not as strict as those on the radio unit. Again, we mustn't forget the frequency error requirement, and in order to meet that, although the network time error requirement for the front hall network is, is not particularly strict, it could be as much as one microsecond, the variation on it, the wander, has to be kept really small, less than 63 nanoseconds, in order for the radio units to be able to produce a signal that meets the frequency error requirement. That's a quick tour of some of the synchronization requirements in front hall networks and the work that the ORAN Alliance is doing to address that. Thank you for listening and I look forward to your questions.